Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Avery. Today I'm going to ask you a question. Do you really want to be a computational chemist? Think about it. I've been one for a really long time, and there are certainly aspects of computational chemistry that I love a lot more than traditional wet lab techniques, but it's not for everyone. Today in this video I'd like to go over the cons of being a computational chemist. We'll hit those first. I like hitting the cons first. That will pave the way for the pros of becoming a computational chemist in 2025 and beyond because there certainly are a lot of pros I wouldn't be one if I didn't believe that then I'd like to leave you with some tips on how to break into this field whether you're a brand new student or an experimental chemist that wants to jump ship or test out some of these methods on your own I will give you some solid strategies to do that So let's jump right in. Con number one is skepticism from colleagues. This is becoming less and less of an issue as reliance on computational techniques in the industry really start to grow and grow. This is something that I've experienced just a little bit in my academic and professional career, but like I said, it's not too much of an issue right now. That being said, there's always the possibility that you will approach an experimental chemist with results and you're excited about them and potentially the hypothesis looks good. However, the results are not very well received for a number of reasons that as computational chemists, we have to be empathetic to. Number one is they can start to be a little hand wavy. Some of the explanations are maybe a little bit too far reaching for reality. And number two, our results, while based in physics, are not necessarily grounded in reality and they will always require validation. Now, what I do in my career when I'm approaching a collaboration with an experimental chemist or a biologist, I will always be my own harshest critic. I will lead with the uncertainties in the method, the statistical errors that I expect from the calculations, and I will be very upfront with all the limitations and assumptions that I've made. That really helps establish a rapport with the experimentalist. Con number two about being a computational chemist is that you can work anywhere at any time. Computers don't really care about your personal feelings. They don't have empathy toward your family. They don't understand your needs as a person. They don't understand mental health. Nothing else matters but ones and zeros. You can fulfill a lot of deadlines on projects. You can make people very happy. And also you can wildly shift your work-life balance out of whack and start to become almost depressed and the work just doesn't feel like it did before and you start to burn out and that's a real issue that computational chemists can potentially face. Con number three of being a computational chemist, you have to be exceedingly good at multitasking because oftentimes you're handling not one or two projects at a time, you're handling more like five, six, seven, maybe eight projects at a time. I'm speaking specifically about R&D, drug discovery. You could be working on a hit. You could be working on lead optimization. You could be working on two or three projects that are in the formulation stage and the clinical stage. You could be doing all different types of modeling for all the teams. You have to attend meetings for all of these teams. You have to keep all of your protein targets straight all of the physical properties of your ligands and the lead optimization candidate clear in your head. You have to be very good at taking notes, I would say. Keeping a notebook is not just for experimental chemists. They really will save your life. Con number four, depending on how you choose to look at it, is that the tools available to a computational chemist are evolving very rapidly. Now for you, this would mean keeping on top of the literature, choosing to read and study, all the time, just like you're in grad school, always proposing new solutions, always learning new tools, constantly evolving your toolkit, and becoming the best computational chemist you can be. A lot of people enjoy that. I personally really enjoy the idea of learning and studying, practicing and perfecting new tools. I live in that space. That's great for me. That's not for everyone. And you have to really 
decide if that's the level of detail and the level of study that you really want to put in. All right, we've talked about four cons of being a computational chemist. Now I'd like to go into some of the pros. Pro number one is flexible work hours and location. Now I know I listed this as one of the cons, and it is if you let your work-life balance get thrown out of equilibrium. However, this saved my life because in grad school, when I was training to be a computational chemist, I started my family and had two children. Children are unpredictable. Life is unpredictable. If you can get your work done on your own personal time, and even in your professional career by becoming a consultant, for example, you can work anywhere, anytime, as long as you deliver results on the deadline, you're golden. Pro number two about being in computational chemistry. It is a lot safer than wet lab chemistry. In undergrad, I was in a PCHEM lab and I was running an experiment, an ITC or isothermal calorimetry experiment. Maybe some of you have run experiments like this before. Unfortunately, my proclivity for wet lab techniques was not good. And I caused an explosion that rained mercury down on everyone. And the lab had to be evacuated for the rest of the day. I knew right then and there that I loved chemistry, but the wet lab was not for me. We have to worry about things like ergonomics, how you sit in your chair. We're not talking about toxic fumes. We're not talking about potential for explosion or fire. We're talking about carpal tunnel syndrome. Not really the same order of magnitude in danger. Pro number three about being a computational chemist is it allows a certain amount of leverage of intellectual skill that will save money in a real-world environment. In drug discovery, we're allowed to test and run virtual experiments basically for free. When you compare the costs of a high-throughput virtual screen, for example, for experiment, there's time, there's supplies, there's setup. For a computational chemist, we pay for high-performance computing clusters or possibly the cloud, but the costs don't scale the same. So we can run virtual screening experiments or other types of modeling for a drug discovery campaign in a much faster and a much cheaper way than an experimental chemist could. If you're still with me, and this sounds like you, you really want to be a computational chemist, then I'll leave you with some take-home tips. Number one, make sure you network intentionally. Go out and join LinkedIn, which is a professional social media network. Connect with your favorite company, learn a little bit about their culture, learn a bit, little bit about employees that are in the positions that you want to be in, reach out, start conversations. You never know where they'll lead. Number two, go out and build something. I'm not opposed to reading theory and reading books, but your experience, especially when job hunting, needs to come in more tangible forms. Go out, build a GitHub page. Try to reproduce some data using open source tools and publicly available data sets. Publish code in Jupyter Notebooks. You're trying to build a public-facing portfolio of what you can offer. On that note, also reach out to companies. I know there are a lot of pharmaceutical startups these days that are always looking or can benefit from computational chemistry help, even if there's nothing listed. Reach out to some of these companies and ask if they'll allow you to do an internship or pro bono work. It benefits them, it benefits you, and in the end, it's just a really strong strategy. Finally, if you want to be a computational chemist, don't just click buttons. Don't be a technician. Be at the interface of physical theory, of chemistry, of biology, of computer science and programming. All of these skill sets intersect one another in the field of computational chemistry. You really have to be an expert or a master at all of these. Do not just click buttons. Anyone can do that. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit like. Drop a comment below if you're considering this field. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to start a dialogue. Please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in deeper dives into computational chemistry. And I'll see you again next time.